So, hello, <coughs> my name is Artem, and uh, I will present you Agile on for our board, or how we do it at Intel. Uh, I know all of you already tired, and um, I'll try to be fast at the speed of light. Uh, so, I've been working at Intel for, for about uh, two years as a Scrum Master. Previously, I'm working as a uh, firmware engineer. And uh, our team, or I can say, can I say teams, uh, we are making a product uh, for a server platform, which is uh, sit on the server board, communicate with uh, CPU, with uh, power supplies, with uh, other other sensors, and it's managing the uh, power of uh, power consumption of. Uh, server platform so we have, our product is for sure is embedded and for sure on board. Uh, previously in normal way for embedded systems it was uh, using the waterfall methodology uh, because you know that release the time between releases in uh, embedded world it was stretched from the from one year from many years <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you have a problem to make a waterfall in such situation but time changes there are new trends uh, the time to market in our modern world the time to market for new product generation is getting smaller and smaller. As I said before, if previously we had a year before uh, between the releases, now we uh, must release a uh, new product uh, each year or even faster. So, uh, waterfall is, uh, not, uh, is not good for us now. And also, they have, we have a new trend, with, which is called shift left. Uh, shift left is delivering a high level of readiness early in the development cycle. It means that before we have already implemented hardware and finally tested it, we need to provide that firmware that will, will work on this hardware. It's really a, hard to do, it's even impossible to do in waterfall, so we start to seek something new and the findings for, now, for us it was Agile. Uh, the story of Agile as Intel began six years ago when the uh, post-silicon validation team, team which is validating as you can understand, silicon, I mean the cheap after mass production, uh, they implemented Agile and uh, it works for them. So the, after that times, uh, many uh, teams at Intel start to use Agile. So uh, our uh, product owner with uh, uh, architect and team members Together, together, and uh, separate and uh, perform a backlog by dividing the functionality is in small pieces. But this pieces is fully functional, fully functional product, and put it into the backlog as a separate story. Uh, so we we got backlog, but the first problem we are met what the lack of hardware because you know on the early stage we didn't have hardware at all and we need to somehow to deliver working product after each sprint so the prototyping saved us really so what 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 do we use we are using a previous generate use previous generation of platform also, we are using a uh, simulation board. I mean, the board which is provide all necessary interfaces and could emulate their 
different buses, etc., etc. Uh, because you know that new generation of uh, power supplies or CPU could have interfaces is not yet available, and somehow we need to emulate it. Uh, that is why we have special lab, uh, which is provide all necessary hardware works. I mean, all interfaces, we could connect to them the simulation board and uh, emulate all signals, what we need. Uh, even the signals are provided from the CPU. Uh, so in the worst case, we are using so-called big guns. It's a hybrid virtual platform. There is a field programmable gate arrays. Uh, so it's uh, part of hardware is to emulate it into the FPGA, and uh, we could uh, we got uh, code from the, our hardware teams and could use it and modify it on, on, on our own. Uh, so we have a we have backlog. We have. Hardware somehow. Now, what to do with the team? Normally, oh, I don't know why, why it's all. So, normally, in Agile, the team member put up, put the stories, and team uh, team member could put story that he want and also the he, he would trade stories between uh, other uh, team members. In our cases, in the embedded world, uh, it's uh, that what I said previously. It's okay for high level programming, but in embedded world, uh, there are a lot of specific features, and uh, one person is a uh, really master in one particular area so it's really hard to switch tasks between peoples what we do we make some small group of peoples uh, generally it's a pair of engineers it's one of them most experienced in some area and uh, one of them not and uh, story is taken by this pair of engineers but also traded between the pairs of engineers so the uh, one engineer is always learning from another in this pair and uh, and uh, could switch the tasks uh, of course uh, it's not uh, connected only to their development the validation is also the uh, validation team is also members of this uh, agile team, and the big problem, big issue that we faced at the beginning, it was that we are in one team we separating development and validation stories, and it's a that that. For example, if a sprint one developer takes story, make some functionality, and then try to uh, close this story, uh, the acceptance criteria is only the small touch tests and uh, maybe code review. Looks like okay, but when in sprint three. When the validation starts to really test this functionality, it prefers a, a test specification, wrote the tests, and etc. etc. It appears that functionality is barely working. It's only the, this uh, small touch tests doesn't show this. That is why we need to create new story put it to the backlog uh, and this story is, should be already implemented before so we only waste the time 
what does it mean? It means that feature development and its validation should be done in the same sprint, uh, but not like it was done in one other team. When the in sprint one, development and validation has a set one story, but in real life, it, it was that the development, uh, validation always wait on a working code. So, it couldn't be done in this way, because it's only uh, widening the time frame of sprint, or maybe you could do less stories. Uh, if there are clear specifications, then the development and validation team should start working in parallel. Development team start, start uh, roll their um, code, and the validation team prepares the hardware environment at the at the, uh, at the same time, and uh, also uh, starting uh, roll test based on specification in parallel. So, validation around the test, and then we have developing, uh, we have created a test portfolio because a test, when you, it not means that a validation test something once and then put it on the shelf. Uh, we gather all these tests and then running something like uh, what is called regression testing. Uh, after each sprint, after each iteration, the portfolio is growing and then the, uh, on some milestones we run the big amount of testings. I mean the regression testings. Why? Because they are implementing new functionality, especially when it's uh, deeply connected to the hardware could cause that previously implemented functionality became broken. That is why we need once, one and one again uh, rerun tests. Also, the small uh, part of the small amount of, of tests, it's regression testing, I could say this way also, uh, it's nightly testing. The uh, test which are chosen as the best one, and they could be run over the night. So each night, uh, after the validation go home, the automats uh, start to perform nightly testing. All, all new builds, uh, all builds uh, of these days are goes to the nightly testings. And of course, uh, pass rate. What does it mean? For our in our case, pass rate is uh, some kind of definition of done. Uh, the story could be, uh, at the beginning, we def when we define the story, we put there the criteria of test and their um, severity that should pass uh, before the story could be accepted. Otherwise, it's, it's rejected. Uh, of course, 100% uh, test passed, it could be only for uh, some critical parts of code and when you already have all necessary hardware, dedicated hardware. When you have uh, simulated hardware, it could be that, for example, should pass only 70% uh, of tests. And uh, when you got uh, Amount uh, test created already, so there is uh, only one step to test automation. All our engineers, I mean, not only develop uh, validation but also development, uh, have prepared automatic test environment. The device under the test is our product. The test framework it could be a simple PC with all necessary debuggers, 
uh, simulation boards, uh, sniffers, and of course a special automatic uh, uh, software on it, which could run uh, test written in some script <coughs> languages. And then the tests are done, the result of tests are stored on the server, and uh, all engineers could uh, have access to the result of tests. So when all, in, when all engineers validate, validation and development had such an uh, environment prepared, it's only one step to make a farm of the test set. So uh, we have such uh, prepared in our labs and uh, in parallel we could uh, run a thousand of uh, tests. And then, uh, of course, uh, it's, it, after each build, we make it the basic test. It's a basic validation test. It's some kind of small test. It, uh, it should be really short, uh, not longer than one hour. And uh, the result of this test is an exit criteria. Is, it, uh, build okay? is the build okay? And it could be passed further to the validation or it's uh, failed. But not only validation could uh, help test uh, proper, could help to find defects. There are also there are ways to avoid defects before providing them. Uh, and this is a unit test. There are unit tests. Uh, I know that uh, Many of engineers uh, doesn't like write unit test because they think that it's uh, not necessary work and uh, wasting a lot of time. And uh, previously we didn't uh, roll the unit test. And uh, this project, the last hour project, the first one when we try to unit test our firmware. And uh, I would say for sure uh, the number of defects uh, decreased. I could, I could say the number right now, but for example, the problems of, uh, like I said, the problems of holy copy and paste uh, are simply avoiding by using unit test, uh, but with, by unit testing. So it's a, a low validation. Uh, it's decreased the validation team effort uh, and also allow them to concentrate not on uh, verification and uh, retesting fixes but on uh, writing new tests or maybe on preparing some system tests and also it's improving planning and the uh, velocity of whole team because we are becoming more predictable. And the main feature that is given us by Agile is a customer feedback. Previously, uh, when we do waterfall, the customer give us a feedback only during the big main milestones, I mean the big releases, it's alpha, beta, etc. And now the customer could get uh, feedback, uh, could uh, take our product and test it our each, after each sprint because after each sprint we are delivering the full functional uh, product. Maybe a number of this function is reduced but it's full, fully functional and um, uh, one of the big OEM companies, our customers, is already admires uh, uh, our uh, our feed admires that uh, our fast reaction on their feedback. So uh, their agile is for sure is good for us. Uh, so sorry, I'm from my English and I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> uh, that is all from me. Uh, have you any questions? 
uh, what you described uh, in one of the slides, it was continuous testing. Yeah. Uh, to my understanding, what you have described is uh, usually called continuous integration. And also, uh, when you told that uh, each build is tested, uh, you didn't use the term sanity test. Why is there is uh, such a difference in terms? No. Yes, Con uh, sometimes it's called continuous integra integration, continuous continuous integration. integration. but uh, in continuous integration, mostly as far as I know, uh, it was done that way that uh, if uh, something goes wrong, it will be fixed until you find out the solution. In our case, we have a backlog of defects. It's only uh, the validation only find uh, uh, defects, and the development team fixes it as uh, as far as possible. No, not 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 uh, at the same time. So, regarding to this one, in addition, that you mentioned that we will printing the letter of customer fully functional problem. So if you have defects, whether you are well, okay, you can put those in record, but what does this mean? Probably you make a fix, so you isolate this code that is for performing, uh, or you actually still expand this string and fix those parts. Yeah, so, uh, no, we not expand the strings. Uh, as, as I mentioned, there is an exit criteria for uh, the story for the fun functionality and for example it would it should uh, have 70% uh, of uh, test cases passed and there is no critical difference for example <coughs> critical that the functionality does not work uh, it could be that uh, functionality doesn't work in some conditions and with the, this uh, annotation we deliver it to the customer Could you tell a bit more about uh, how you perform validation of complete products? But product is in development, we already start validating uh, how we do it. Uh, so, yeah. uh, you mean uh, at the same time, yeah? How to, how to validate it? So, of course, at the beginning we have a specification, and then, uh, based on specification, uh, Developers start to develop in code and uh, integrate it. I mean, they're try trying to run it on the hardware that we have at the moment. At the same time, validation prepares the test sets and wrote, uh, they wrote the test in the script languages uh, for simulating some signals and the. Uh, uh, and other stuff, and then uh, after build, some build that we are integrating. So we on these test sets, we are running all tests on the new implemented firmware. So during the firmware implementation, also uh, development uh, validation also implementing the tests, and then so before it was like development is done, and only the test is done. Yes, yes, at the same time. We, we are doing, now we are doing it at the same time. Uh, why have you decided to use exactly Scrum, uh, Agile, this uh, part of Agile Scrum? For example, have you looked to the uh, like Toyota production system and the part of this, like Lean, Lean, Dream, Lean, software development, and so on? Yeah, I think maybe it would be better off in like, your product team. Uh, it's a production system, yes, so, uh, producing hardware, and uh, I think that way of doing it may be special. Okay, so, <laughs> yes, uh, but uh, how, uh, why, why you decided to use the Texas Prompt? Yes, uh, okay, so there, because there, uh, Because uh, we have at Intel now the big scrap agile community, so they are really promoted agile. And uh, previously also we tried to use uh, 
Kanban. Uh, I mean, it, it's the simplest way, and uh, it's, it's apparent that it does not fit us uh, as, as we want. So, uh, because of having uh, such a big uh, community, we tried to implement Scrum. Yeah. So, uh, uh, as I said before, the first uh, time Agile, Agile uh, Scrum, yeah, that was implemented, uh, it was first team who is implemented uh, Agile six years ago. But in our team, particular team, yes, it, it's, it started only two years ago. I know that uh, we are only baby stage now, uh, because uh, right now, Started to work for us. <laughs> so, the following part will be uh, when you only started two years ago, you have to uh, estimate in the beginning. So, as I assume, uh, you uh, might fail at the estimation in your team. Someone will tell I was doing two, two days, some in the four. Uh, how you handle? Bad estimation because uh, if you estimate six hours, it's been twelve. If bad, when you estimate twelve hours, it's been six. And sprint uh, will, will finish in four days, not six. For example, mm -hmm. it's also bad. How do you handle situation when you well need uh, an estimate? Yeah. Uh, so of course, at the beginning we are failed everywhere. We are failed in estimating the story points. We are failed in estimating the time. But uh, after uh, maybe it's lucky for us we have a really big project. So uh, after I believe uh, four or five sprints, we are make each sprint, each planning session we are making a race estimation, maybe separating, sto dividing story, creating epics because you know some story that was previously defined uh, appeared uh, su such big that. It, it even they even fit that sprint, so we are divided it in uh, uh, some epics and they're performing the estimation. Each uh, planning station we are performing an estimation based on our previous experience. <laughs> okay. So you have development part and validation part. Validation yeah. part is something that you uh, can't really uh, estimate. Because maybe for each feature you will spend 10 hours to validate or one hour. Do you have any maybe percent that you uh, add to your, uh, for your developers? Say, I will do it in 12 hours. And uh, for example, for validation, you need 20% or 30%. Or you have a... Yeah, yeah. I understand the equation. So, in general, most time of our validation is uh, writing test cases. So it's uh, some, somehow the, 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 the programming. Because it, it also could be estimated in times, like a, a firmware programmer estimates its time. And uh, we only put a buffer for uh, preparing these hardware sets. And then uh, Running test cases is in uh, in the uh, background. Yeah, so it's not affecting the uh, validation time. So thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>